YouTube. This is Common Sense Professor, and today we're going to be taking our last project that we did and adding just a little bit to it. So if you haven't had a chance, go back and look at the Easy Project 1 uh, project that we did together for last time. I'll go over it just a little bit, but so you kind of get an understanding of what we're doing here. But basically what we're doing is we're taking that last project and we're going to add a jog switch to it. And so what a jog switch does is um, it's a, a separate button. If you just need to move a conveyor belt or turn a motor just a little bit, you hit a button and the motor comes on only when the jog button is pressed and it goes off whenever it's depressed. And so there's a little thing about PLCs that we need to look at. I'm going to show you the way that you would think you would do this project, and then I'm going to show you the way that you have to do it uh, just because of the way that the PLC scans. We'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so here's our program from last time. And again, if you haven't had a chance, go back and watch the video and explain what's going on here. But basically, just a quick overview, uh, we've got three things that will drop this motor out. We've got a local e-stop, which is normally closed. And you see I've got down here, it's closed. We've got a global e-stop, our line e-stop, which is normally closed. And I've got that closed here. And then we've got our overspeed switch that's normally open. That's why I'm using an XIO here. And so that's normally open. Now, when an operator comes in and hits start, it's going to run the motor, seal it in. And so when the operator lets off, it'll remain running until one of these is enabled. So whenever either one of these e-stops are activated or this overspeed switch is activated, it'll drop out your run command. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in a jog. Again, I'm going to start with this by showing you how you would think you would do a jog switch. And then I'm going to show you how it doesn't work on a PLC and explain why. So normally if you want to do a jog switch, we're going to start here. I'm going to branch around our... And you can actually have this as a uh, extension of this branch, but just to show a little difference here, I'm going to add my jog uh, XIC in here. And so the idea is, is that whenever I push this button and I've already got input zero set aside for my jog. And so whenever I push this button, it runs our motor. And whenever I let off, it stops the motor. But in reality, what happens is whenever I push this button, it seals this motor in and it'll continue to run even when I let off because it's sealing this in. So, so let me just show you this real quick. And we'll, we'll take this a step at a time so you can see why this won't work. Let's go ahead and download this. Okay, now remember, I, I set aside zero here for my jog. So I'm going to jog the motor. Okay, motor's running. You notice this comes on as well. I let off and I'm still running because I actually activated my seal in with my jog switch. Okay, so that won't work. Now let me show you what we would normally do to fix the problem and how it still won't work uh, is normally we'd put an XIO in to drop out this run whenever our jog is activated. Okay, so whenever I push this button, this opens up and does not allow this to run. Okay, so let's download that and see if that works. That should fix our problem. And if you're doing motor controls, this is how you would fix the problem. All right, so now I'm going to hit my jog button. Notice this is off, but this is still activated. So why is this still activated? Well, it's activated because it's looking at this here. Okay, so when I let off my jog, it's still running. All right. So let's try one more thing real quick. Let's move this because remember PLC scan the left, the right, top, the bottom. Let's put our jog before our run command and see if that makes a difference. So let's, let's just add these. I'm going to combine these here and I'm going to move these around. Now, ideally what should happen is since it's scanning top to bottom, left to right, this will deactivate before this is remaining sealed in. So let's, let's see if it worked. All right, let's do our jog. We're jogging, it's running. Now we're gonna unjog 
and it's still happening so quickly that when we switch back over, this is just not enough to drop this out. Okay, so there's got to be another way, and there is. So we're going to look at using latches and unlatches. Okay, so I'll switch this around a little bit, and let me talk about what I did here. Um, for one thing, we have our latch that's going to keep the motor running, uh, and then I've got my associated unlatch that'll stop the motor. That's the only time you use the same tag for an OTE because those are OTLs and OTUs. They have to be associated with each other. Now, if I hit my start, I want to latch my motor on, or if I hit my jog, I'm going to latch my motor on. But when I let off my jog, I shut my motor off. Now the problem, so these are opposite each other, XO and XIC here, XSC, XIO. Now the reason that I had to put these in parallel is because if any one of these is activated, I need to unlatch my motor. And so that's what's different about using latch and unlatch and our normal sealing circuits. You'll also notice that I had to use the opposite instruction bits for this. So for uh, our first project, these were XICs because whenever these are normally closed buttons, and so we need it to keep uh, an active path. The reason I have switched this is because if this is activated all the time and enabled, our motor will never run because it's unlatched all the time. And so I had to have a low signal coming in here until these are activated. And I had to do the same for the overspeed switch. Now this, unfortunately, this is still not going to work. And we're going to talk about why that is. I'm not going to download this. But the reason it's still not going to work is because my jog switch, just exactly what I just told you, when I'm not activating my jog switch, I keep that unlatched all the time. And so it only works right now whenever I hit jog that deactivates this XIO here activates my latch and then when I let off of this it reactivates this and unlatches. So how can we fix this? Well it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to use a one shot here like I mentioned before. So what our one shot is going to do is um, and I just created a simple tag for my one shot here. What my one shot is going to do is whenever I activate this it's going to latch my motor in and when I deactivate it, remember a one shot just gives you a pulse out whenever it goes high. And so it's going to give me a pulse out enough to unlatch my motor, but it's not going to hold that high because it's only a pulse. So even though this is held high, the output of my one shot, it just goes high for a millisecond. So let's watch this work just to prove that this is the way that we need to do our jog switch inside of PLC. First, what I'll do is do the normal start and stop to prove that it still works. So here's our start. Motor's running. I let off. It stays running. If I activate any of my stops, it'll stop my motor. Or if I activate my overspeed switch, it stops my motor. Okay. Now let's look at our jog. So what should happen now is... When I hit jog, it starts my motor, but when I let off this jog, it says stop my motor. So let's see if our one shot works here. And it does. See that? There's my jog switch that turns my motor on whenever I push it and turns it off whenever I let off of it. And here's my start that starts it and keeps it running even when I'm not pressing it. Okay. Be sure and watch this again. This can be just a little confusing, but I wanted to take you through all the steps to show you what works and what doesn't work. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as soon as I can.